What's going on, friends? The one thing that absolutely makes your Harley Davidson uncomfortable to ride during the hot summer temperatures is the engine heat. Now, the engine heat not only makes it uncomfortable to ride, but it also reduces your engine's performance, its longevity, and not to mention your fuel economy. Now, there is one way to quickly and easily get the engine temperatures down on your Harley Davidson, but at the same time, it might come at some of your comfort, and not to mention, it's not really cheap, but it is quick and easy to get installed. Harley-Davidson's are very simple air-cooled engines. They're very happy as long as you're running down the road, you're getting good airflow over the cylinders, over the heads. That is when they are absolutely at their optimum temperature. Now, we all know that it is not always possible to be moving on your motorcycle. Now, when you're running down the road, yes, there's a lot of heat being generated by that motor, but you got that airflow over that. It's taking that heat. It's pushing it behind you. You're not even really feeling it. You're getting the breeze, unless you're out in the desert, then it's pretty warm. But in most cases, that wind is not only cooling the engine, but it's cooling you down too, and it's carrying that heat away from you and putting it right behind you. You don't even really notice it. Now, the worst thing that can possibly happen when you're out on your Harley is you get stuck in heavy traffic at a light. Maybe there's an accident up there, and you're just basically stuck in, stuck in go traffic. The one thing we can't do is we can't let the bike sit there and basically cook itself to death. And trust me, they will do it. Guys, please don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, if you're riding a fuel-injected Harley, they do have some safeguards in place, unlike the old carbureted bikes. Now, a fuel-injected Harley, they have the ability to pull some timing out of the engine. They have some ability to put more fuel in. They also have the ability to shut down the rear cylinder. All this in an attempt to try to cool down the bike at idle. Even at idle, fuel injected bike, it can lower the idle down to a specified range. But the one thing that it's not getting is its primary source of cooling, and that's airflow over the cylinders and the heads. With the exception of the twin cooled bikes and the water cooled heads, your Harley Davidson is dependent on number one, the airflow across the cylinders, and number two, the oil to cool the engine down. If you have an oil cooler, especially a factory one without a fan assist, that's only good if you're running down the road. Even a fan-assisted oil cooler, this will help to cool the bike down if you're sitting in traffic, but at some point, the engine is gonna get so hot that even a fan-assisted oil cooler, it's not gonna have that much of a profound effect on cooling as actually having airflow over the cylinders would. Now, with all that said, really the only option other than shutting your bike off and starting it up constantly, cycling it through that while you're sitting in traffic, is to add a set of fans to the cylinders. Now, I say adding a set of fans to the cylinders, this is a very personal choice because it really does, in my opinion, change the look of the bike quite a bit. Now, having a set of fans on your cylinders, this really helps when you're sitting in traffic or at a light because you're getting airflow across the cylinder. You're basically artificially creating that engine's natural cooling system. And by doing that, when you leave that light, that engine's already at a cooler temperature. It takes the engine less time to get cooled down back to its optimum temperature when you're running down the road, which basically results in better fuel economy and more power. Now this also creates a much better environment for your engine oil. Your engine oil basically has a total base number with its additive package. And through the heat cycles and use of the engine, that the base number is actually reduced. And that's when your oil basically becomes worn out and needs to be changed. And with the more heat that the oil has to deal with, that reduces that total base number faster but that's a topic for a whole other video. Now, the issue with adding fans to the cylinders is that you are moving air across those cylinders, but you're also pushing hot air away from the cylinders and it has to go somewhere. And with most typical fan designs, they mount in the horn location. So you're basically pushing hot air over onto your right leg. Now, the good news is, is that if you're sitting at a light, Typically, your feet are going to be down while those fans are running, so you're not cooking your right leg off. Unless you have some amazing balance skills and you can sit at a light for five minutes without putting your feet down, something I'd definitely like to see. Now, if you're riding a trike, typically, you're probably still going to have your feet up on the pegs or on the floorboards, and basically, it's going to cook your right leg off unless you feel like putting your leg down to let that hot air exhaust and not basically burn your leg. Now, the bad part is, is if you're in kind of stop-and-go traffic and you're riding slowly and those fans are on, Yes, your right leg is going to be taking all of that heat all at once. The good news is, is that you're actually cooling the engine down and it's not going to overheat on you. But the bad news is your right leg's overheating. So those are some good considerations to think about before you go out and spend the money to get some cooling fans for your cylinders. It's not really a big deal for a lot of people, 
Some people are going to hate it. Some people aren't. It's not really not going to bother them. But at the end of the day, that's going to be a decision that you're going to have to make for yourself and decide if actually putting some cooling fans on your bike is right for you and the way you ride. If you can deal with a little added heat on your right leg, to me, that is definitely worth every penny spent to basically cool the engine down and extend the longevity of the engine, get more power, and basically not overheat during the summer months like I am right now trying to film this video. Installing fans on your Harley-Davidson is super easy. It's a lot less more involved than installing an oil cooler. Installing an oil cooler isn't hard, but it's a bit more involved than what it takes to actually just bolt on a set of fans and plug them in. Installing fans is one of the super simple ways to cool your bike down. They just basically mount in the horns location, you hide the wires, and they'll plug right in the diagnostic port in your bike, and that's where they're powered off of. You can get this done within the hour and be ready to ride. Now, I'm not saying that a set of fans on the cylinders is going to take the place of an oil cooler, because to me, an oil cooler is a very integral part of a Harley-Davidson engine, and honestly, every Harley-Davidson should have an oil cooler. Even better, a fan-assisted oil cooler. But, as I mentioned, the oil coolers are a lot more involved to install, and they're definitely going to take a little bit longer than an hour. Now, after installing an oil cooler, personally, I like to change the oil. I know they're manufactured in a nice, controlled environment, but you never know what's actually down in the oil cooler itself, even if it's brand new. So I like to put about 50 to 100 miles on a brand new oil cooler and then go ahead and change the oil. That's not something you're going to have to worry about if you're just putting a set of fans on the bike to get you through the summer and you want to wait till the winter time and go ahead and install an oil cooler for the next summer. And honestly, one of the best cooling setups you can have on a Harley Davidson is to put some fans on the cylinders and also have that auxiliary oil cooler. The other thing with an auxiliary oil cooler too, and this is a good arguable point, is that it is another leak point on the bike. You've got to make sure all your connections are tight. It's something that you definitely want to keep up with because the last thing you want to do is have your ride ruined by a line coming off your oil cooler and dumping all your oil out on the ground. Even worse, you ride through it, you go down, makes for a really bad day. But anyhow guys, I want to know your opinion on putting fans on the cylinders. Is that a yay or a nay for you? Do you like it? Do you think they're ugly? Do you think they're worth what they do for cooling down the engine? Also, what do you think about adding an auxiliary cooler and combining the two? Guys, let me know in the comments. I want to know what kind of cooling setups you guys are running on your bikes. I'm really curious. Are you running the fans in the oil cooler? Just an oil cooler? Just fans alone? Or any other combinations you may have come up with? I've seen some guys that run dual oil coolers. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. If you guys enjoyed the video, please don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel. But until next week, guys, you stay cool, stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching. Huh.